Modern cave mirrors like this one can burn through things or even start a fire. For example, it burns straight through this piece of construction paper right here. If you think that's cool, join me in mirrors and electricity, not just for checking your reflection. This right here is a table of contents. This is just a scientific method and how I followed it. Now, the first step is to formulate a question. My question was, can concave mirrors be used to generate electricity? To answer that, I developed a hypothesis. Yes, I believe so. Concave mirrors have proven on multiple occasions to generate lots of heat. For example, the Vidara Hotel incident. The Vidara Hotel was a curved hotel made of reflective glass, and it ended up focusing light onto the pool deck and burned its sunbathing guests. If concave mirrors can create so much heat, I believe that if water is placed at the focal point of a concave mirror, it could turn it, it would turn, in, turn into steam and then power a steam turbine. This, is, uh, this design could even be made portable for use in remote or rural areas. Before I delve into my materials list, I wanted to say that I thought it would be hard to find a concave mirror, especially one with the dimensions I want, and then make that concave mirror portable. I took this, that's why I took it upon myself to build my own, by arranging multiple squ small square mirrors in a concave fashion. This is the materials list, and for the lighting, which I will elaborate on later, I will use halogen bulbs, a reflector, and a string light wire. On to my method. For the mirror dish and the steam turbine, I will be following a similar method in which I will design, then build, then test. In the design phase for both, I will be gathering materials, uh, drawing out my design, and planning out how I will execute this design. For the building, I followed this plan uh, and built a prototype of my design, and then I improved and adjusted this. For the testing of the mirror dish, I tested whether it could generate steam, and for the steam turbine, I tested whether steam could generate electricity. For the lighting, I'll elaborate here. Right now, it's very cold outside, so for my project that needs to generate heat, the weather isn't going to be compliant. I will try and recreate the sun's parallel rays indoors in a temperature-controlled environment. To do so, I will use a reflector uh, that will make the light rays straight and bright light bulbs, the halogen light bulbs. I will research and then I will test whether it works or not. These are some photos documenting my progress. This right here is the mirror dish without the mirrors attached. Uh, I split it into eight fins to make it portable. These are two completed fins. This is my steam turbine. Sorry about the blurriness, but uh, here's the wire, here's the DC motor, here's the fan, here's the, the tube that brings steam in, and the tube that brings condensed water out, and finally the lid. This is my lighting setup with the halogen bulbs uh, aiming at the reflector, the reflector reflecting the light down. Here are some more photos. This is uh, four stacked fins, the portable. Um... Here are some more photos. These are four stacked fins. This is how it will be portable. And this is my final setup with the steam turbine placed outside of the mirror dish so it doesn't cast a shadow. This lighting system is different because it was an early picture. On to my results. I will start off by talking about the results of my mirror dish testing. I took 10 tests in total, 5 tests indoor, and 5 tests outside. These two, point, two points I've already touched upon. Now, I'll start from the third. After trying 3 different types of target cups, the target cup being the cup that will um, be where the mirrors is focusing the light onto, and therefore that cup will hold the water, these three different types of... Um, I tested three out, one of aluminum, one of stainless steel, and one, a mix of aluminum and tin-plated steel, which is a food can, and I decided that food can, that I would use a food can in further tests. Not because it performed the best, it performed second best, but because it was disposable, easily available, and it was good at what I wanted it to do. Um, now, why, did I, why would I bring my test outside? Well, after testing, I really, um, what happened is that the maximum temperature increase was only by 2 degrees. And I did some research, and the lumens generated by 200 watts of uh, sunlight compared to the lumens generated by the two com combined 200 watts of the four bulbs that I use is drastically less indoors than it is outside. So, 
I moved out. I moved outdoors. This was much more successful than my indoor test. I managed to heat water up to 25 degrees Celsius outside. In one test, when the water spilled out, the air temperature or the metal of the can, I'm not sure which, actually reached 45 degrees Celsius. These are some photos um, comparing the two setups. This is my indoor setup and this is my outdoor setup. This laundry basket is here to protect the device from the wind. And as you can see, the mirror dish is tilted. This is an outdoor picture. It just shows you the light hitting the can properly. And this is a chart that I made comparing the two. As you can see, the red lines, which are the outdoor tests, are much steeper than the blue lines, which are the indoor tests. Um, these two are the proper tests. This one is the anomaly that I spoke to you about previously, when the water spilled out. And this one, the sun's, uh, the sunlight stopped hitting the can and that's why I cooled down, but when I readjusted it so that it did hit the can, it went back up. As for the steam turbine test, these weren't successful. Um, as once I had built most of my steam turbine, I decided to test whether the fan would spin or not uh, uh, by using a kettle and a pressure cooker, and it did not spin with the steam from the kettle, but it did spin with the steam from, uh, from the top of the pressure cooker. My, my steam pressure would be closer to the kettle, so I decided to cut this part of my project out. Finally, my conclusion. My conclusion had two parts. One, of, uh, I'll start with the first. My project was not successful in the terms of fulfilling my hypothesis, but it did back up a working theory that does fulfill my hypothesis. It showed that me, I use small craft materials in a cold environment to heat water up to 25 degrees Celsius. Using industrial materials, I will most um, likely be able to generate steam or even better condition, the weather conditions might uh, help me do that. For the steam turbine part, I decided to cut that part of my project out because steam turbines are a known uh, invention and if steam is generated with my device, then a steam turbine is implied like electricity generation is implied. D uh, during this testing of my innovation, this is my second part, I actually realized that I tested more than I set out to. For example, I tested the conductivity and retention of heat of metals. I tested the that, of, uh, that for aluminum, stainless steel, and a mixture of aluminum and tin plated steel in the food can, for the food can, and found that stainless steel was the best. Um, I also did some tests comparing the strength of the light, light bulbs to sunlight and found that sunlight was much stronger uh, between my indoors and outdoor tests. And this is my project. Thank you for listening.